Uh, well, innovation for me is the process of developing something new. I've come across lots of very ingenious design projects that have been truly innovative. So if I think of an example of tech design that I think is really innovative, um, there's been some fantastic work in Internet of Things technologies by young designers in Africa, particularly in terms of mobile healthcare devices, is um, called Peak Retina, and it's a cell phone adapter that transforms the cell phone into a mobile eye diagnostic device. And so healthcare workers in rural areas can literally use their cell phone and the adapter to diagnose people's eyes for cataracts, glaucoma, and other eye diseases. They send the data on the cellular connection to a big hospital, and the specialists there diagnose the data, work out whether there are any problems, and if there are, they recommend a course of treatment. Well, real progress depends on many other things as well as technology. So progress obviously can take place within the technological sphere, but also outside it. And the democratisation of digital technology has been a fantastic force in contemporary life. Of course, it's caused massive problems from the dark web to other invidious uses of the internet social media trolling and so on and I think it's really the responsibility of technologists and designers to try and anticipate those problems when they develop new technologies so that they genuinely do represent progress and the potential difficulties are minimised. In terms of design, actually I um, was researching recently a um, design project in Nigeria, it's in Lagos, called We Cyclers, and it's a fantastic recycling system because particularly the slums of Lagos are so crowded and congested that it's impossible for refuse trucks to get through. So a Nigerian woman, a Lagosian who'd been educated in the States, went back to Lagos from her American university and having been away for some time, she found it much more surprising and shocking that um, so much potentially recyclable trash was literally just dumped all over the slums and wasn't being cleared. So she developed a service design system of cargo bicycles which go into the slums to collect the trash. And the people who give the recyclable trash to recyclers are paid in points for which they can swap food, household goods, cell phone minutes and so on. But they also very cleverly use actually quite basic technology. They use it in a very innovative and ingenious way. Because simply by sending texts to people who've signed up for the system, and many thousands of Lagosians already have, by sending them texts saying when the cargo bikes are going to be in their area, they make sure that any recyclable trash is waiting for them. I think we're really only at the beginning of working out how digital culture has changed the way we see the world, the way we respond to it, our perceptions in all sorts of ways. I mean, so many things change in terms of our cultural perceptions because of our use of digital technology. I mean, even the way we look at colour, because of course the light or the white light on a screen absolutely transforms our perceptions of sort of chromatic qualities and palettes and different combinations of colours. Shapes are changing too. Um, so if you look at the sort of dominant new shapes of particular eras, in the 90s we had the blob, which everybody complained about, you know, when designers suddenly were able to design on their computers, they went for these rather ugly and probably perfect curvaceous blobs, which suddenly appeared everywhere in product design, now I think the new shapes are much more complicated, sort of spiralling, fractured, delicate, very surreal shapes. They're the sort of three-dimensional version of the digital imagery that we see spiralling across our computer screens. And of course, new digital production technologies like 3D printing are enabling us to produce them. Mm -hmm.